it is uh, it is Prafula. I work with an organization called Help Age International that works with older persons um, in Kenya as well as in various parts of Africa and the world. What a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much. Okay, good morning, everybody. My name is Dungo Mushai. Uh, I come from uh, the Purity Elder People Foundation. Good morning. Wanjuku Joyce Kairu is my name. I'll tell you more about me later. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Catherine Kitetu. I work at the county government of Nakuru as the public manage county executive in charge of public ma management and administration. But formerly from Egerton University, a researcher and uh, quite interested in these issues as well. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's not good speaking with your back to people, so I don't know where to stand, but let me turn around so that you can see my face. My name is Ruth Sitati. I work with the judiciary as a high court judge based in, uh, in Kakamega for the moment. I, it's interesting how I found myself here. I think it all started with a con be receiving a telephone call from Professor Anna Stewart about some little write-up had done on woman-to-woman -woman marriage to our judges' uh, uh, conference last year in Mombasa. So she traveled all the way to Kakamega. We had a chat, and later she asked me whether I could be part of this program. I didn't think I would really make it, but I'm glad I'm here here to learn because from what I've read in these uh, documents that we have been supplied with, I actually know nothing about what I wrote about. <laughs> so I'm here to learn. Thank you so much. <laughs> and of course, it's always a judge that reads all the papers, you see. So it's a training. Uh, Subui. My name is uh, Lydia Rugazia from Tanzania, working with Kwawaze organization. Sante Sana. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Agnes Maroka from the University of Nairobi um, School of Law, and we will interact more later. And a key member of the research team. Habari uh, Subui. Let me emulate my sister here. Uh, my name is Celestine Musembi, also from the University of Nairobi School of Law. Happy to catch up with my colleague here. Catch up because I've been away for four years now, uh, living in Lusaka, Zambia, on my leave of absence. Are we about to have something? We're safe. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, I'm here, though I haven't done any research on aging or elderly care, but I think I got invited because I've done some work on property. And also, in giving examples around property, I used a case that had been decided by Justice Ojuang on woman to woman marriage. So I think that's what Anne saw and contacted me. Okay. It will become clear why everybody's here, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm David Ngira Otieno. Um, a lecturer at Mount Kenya University and also a member of the research team. An absolutely crucial member of the research team, without whom uh, David and I have travelled all the <coughs> So thank you, David, for all the work done. Uh, good morning, everybody. Kwa majina ni Fred Waisiko, Natoka Kuria, Mini Chief. Kwa hivyo mina kutana na ayo maneno ya wanawake kuwawana. Good morning to you all. My name is Sir Philip Magutu Basweet, Chief from Kisi. Philip Mwinsang wa Mesema, Hayo Mambo Uwa Tunayapata, Tutayasungumuzia. Morning to you all. By the name I'm Bernard Alewa, Chief Kutoka Migori. Uh, Professor, I'm glad to see you once again. I think we met at Migori. Maybe it was July. Yes. Yeah, God is great because we can meet still. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you very much for uh, coordinating us to meet today here, this morning. Otherwise, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Carolyn Monywa. I'm from National Gender and Equality Commission, Department of Disability and Elderly. Good morning. My name is Tom Mukech uh, from Lavi Foundation. Lavi Foundation works with the older persons in areas of uh, feeding, basic health care, shelter improvement, relocation, uh, home based care, and entrepreneurship. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Stephanie Mutindi is my name, and I work for the National Gender and Equality Commission. Good morning. Lilian Ogutu. I work with National Gender and Equality De uh, Commission. Department is Elderly and Disability Department. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Beatrice Asienua from uh, Center for Policy Analysis. We are a consultancy firm. And actually, I was not the one who was uh, invited to the workshop. My CEO, Ambassador Mai, was supposed to be here. But uh, unfortunately, there were other commitments that came up uh, which he could not avoid. And we work closely with the National Gender and Equality Commission. And because of the previous work we did on the economic burden of gender-based violence on survivors in Kenya, he felt that I should just come, share some of his thoughts, which he shared with me, and also learn more because this, as he said, the older person's uh, uh, issue is a dilemma in this country. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Isabella Abodarin. I lead a unit on aging and development at the African Population and Health Research Center here in Nairobi. And issues of long-term care for older people are a key thematic area in which much of our research and our policy engagement focuses. Good morning, everybody. My name is Arpa Tijero, coming from Trade Union, a union called Kenya Union of Domestic Hotels, Education Institutions, Hospitals, Salary and Workers. But specifically here, I'm coming to talk about domestic workers who are caregivers. Good morning. My name is Eva Magiri. I work at Tomboya Liba College. Uh, I've been working on issues of care work for the last seven years. So when, when uh, our brother, Mr. Njero, saw this, he told me, you must attend this. So I traveled all the way from Kisumu. The last time I was here was in 2011. I was at BIEA. I always quote it as a member, but I think my membership is dead, so I want to renew it. <laughs> and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Onyango Ndeng. I work for Kellen. Kellen is a very long name, which means Kenya Ethical Issues Network on HIV and AIDS. Basically, we, under, uh, we do health rights, and I head the thematic area which deals with women, land, and property rights. I'm based in Kisumu, and I think this is one of the forums that I need to because the older population is a vulnerable population, so I think I'll learn more. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jessica Oloch. I work with the Kenya Legal and Ethical Issues Network. Specifically, we work on women, land, and property rights and working with the elders to resolve disputes. Morning. My name is Janet Anyango. I work with the Federation of Women Lawyers, popularly known as FIDA. Kenya, I'm based in Kisumu office. I'm a legal counsel. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Stella Mukasa. I come from Uganda, and I work with the International Center for Research on Women in the Africa Regional Office based in Kampala. I feel very privileged to be here. ICRW, as a research organization, is very interested in research that focuses on women and girls. So we're very interested in the life cycle approach. We've got strong work going on around young children, girls who are married early, adolescents, women in the middle ages, but the work around elderly women, we, have, we, would, we are very conscious of the need to grow that. And um, also as part of our research, we've um, 
been very interested in women's un unpaid care work, and we have um, some writing and research on that. But Professor Ann Stewart is also my professor, so from when I was a little girl. <laughs> so it's very nice to reconnect. Thank you. I told you I was old. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Faith Ocheng. I work at Kituo Chasheria, and uh, Kituo is known to champion labor rights, land rights, housing and eviction. And uh, because of uh, the core duty we do in championing for domestic workers' rights in Kenya, I was invited uh, just to come and share what we do with the domestic workers in our country. Thank you. Good morning. Um, it's good to see everyone uh, coming in here this morning. Uh, majority of you we have met before as our stakeholders, Isabella and the others. Kuria Paul is my name. I work with the National Gender Equality Commission and all the members of the society is one of our core targets groups and uh, further than that we do a lot of programming around issues of older persons and we are equally passionate about uh, the unpaid care or unpaid labor which is quite invisible and not transferred to the economy in the present country so it's a matter of interest to ourselves thanks I'm Matayo Magalasia. I do volunteer work in the slums of Mazare, Korogocho. Yeah. Great. Um, well, I think, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, my apologies. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, my name is Ati Louis. I work for the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. I'm a lawyer by profession. Thank you. My apologies. It's okay. Is there anybody else that I've missed? Good. Well, thank you. We've got a lovely group of people. Um, you know yourself better than I know you as a group, but hopefully by the end, as I say, of the, the day, we'll all know each other a little bit better. So it's my pleasure now to uh, start the workshop by um, a group of people that uh, have been very important to the organisation of this workshop, the purpose of it really, um, and we thought it would only be appropriate and right to hear the voice of uh, the generation that we are concerned with as a start to our workshop. So it's my great privilege to introduce um, Mama Joyce to us here, who is just going to say a few remarks. I don't, I don't know. I think, yeah. I would have, yeah. This one, I find myself. Yeah. Can we move the one? Yeah. Or if you would like to stand here, you don't need to pull the. No, no. I. It will be as it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. You'll be happy. Uh, good morning again. I, I feel so excited that you are coming to talk about us. <laughs> All of you are gathered here today to discuss the older, the older person. It's very happy. Uh, let, let me just welcome you. Uh, officially. Uh, my name is Jus Kagesi I am 75 years old. Wow. wow. And, <laughs> and if, if we are, you know, Kipanda is there at our time, we didn't have any birth certificates. So we, we, we used to be asked, how old are you? When were you born? And we just didn't need it. So I, I am sure I must be three years old. I do not. More. I should be 78. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm on, I am here at the invitation of Helpage, and my boss in Helpage is Mr. Trafo. He's my boss. <laughs> I like that. I'm an older care, I'm an older carer, and the chairman of our, of our group called 
Gradmofa self help group. Gradmofa. Gradmofa is a, is made up of two words. Grandmother, grandfather, as they say in Kimonumon, it's an acronym. So it is grandmother, grandfather, in, put together is grandmother self help group, which is an, an association of older women who dedicate much of their time providing care and support to children, youth, uh, people, persons with disabilities, and other vulnerable groups. Basically, a community perspective of Gradmofa self-help group. I'm delighted, honored to participate in this unique forum that is dedicated at exploring how older people are taken care of, in spite of them being the best carers at all generations. Surely, I think, I think I'm, I think I could add a bit. We are, we are the best carers because that's why you are, the way you are, we cared for you, that's all. I'm um, quite delighted to welcome the distinguished organizers led by Professor Anne Stewart. Thank you very much. Uh, from the University of Warwick, uh, our host, British Institute of East Africa, National Gender and Equality Commission, uh, and Help and Help Age International. I take this opportunity to recognize as well all other distinguished participants, government officers, scholars. I have just met a professor. Now, that is Professor Anne, and I've met another professor there. So when, when we say uh, scholars, it is there, you are here. And researchers. Now, we said they are doing research. Yeah, they are doing research. And my fellow older persons. At least I can see one there. <laughs> it is common language that older women are the biggest contributors to give to caregiving. Much of their contribution is within the household and therefore unrecognized, unappreciated, and never compensated. As we reflect, share, and learn during these two days. I can request all of you to come out with concrete suggestions on how to empower old women and as such old carers who day in and day out face many challenges. Uh, such challenges include poverty, lack of income, poor health, poor housing, lack of food, pure nutrition, discrimination, and abuse among others. And those issues are real. They are real. On behalf of all the past, all the people in Kenya, allow me this opportunity as well to appreciate the government of Kenya for its effort of providing cash transfer to older persons. We are excited on the, com on the commitment to scale up cash transfer to a universal pension. For those of us who are 70 years and above, I already just I'm looking forward. Um, finally, on behalf of older carers, I have a request that scholars, professors are here, uh, legal pra practitioners, I think it's the one there, civil society organizations, and policy makers present and all represented here today, dedicate and provide more space, resources, and time to research on older persons and aging. This way, issues, needs, and concerns of older of all the people you find relevance, meaning, and support, and support similar to those other age groups. There's the children, there's the youth, those are other age groups who are considered. I thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Um, may I now just move to Ms. Juliet Paula from the Ministry, um, who is able to provide us, I'm sure, with a few opening remarks. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I, I really won't say much because uh, we have a keynote address from the from the chair of the commission. But uh, as a ministry, uh, we want to we feel really honoured to have been given this opportunity to be with you today and uh, to share to share our our experiences as we work for for older persons. Um, as we all know. Uh, just like every other country, the population of older persons in Kenya has uh, increased significantly. And uh, the, the, their lifestyles have also been, been affected by the changes, the changes that uh, have come about either through globalization, urbanization. And uh, as a ministry, we've uh, come up with uh, policy, legal, and programmatic uh, interventions that would enable us to address uh, the issues that uh, affect older persons. Uh, the ministry is in the process of uh, reviewing the older persons and aging policy. Uh, it has taken a bit of some time, but uh, we are towards the tail end of having the policy, the, the reviewed policy approved. Uh, as a ministry, we are also, we've also developed uh, a legal framework that would ensure that the rights of older persons are uh, adequately addressed. And uh, this, uh, the, the development of the, of, the, of, the bill, of the bill was mainly guided by Article 57 of the Constitution. So we are, we are, we are through, the, through, the, through the bill, we are ensuring that uh, all the rights that are factored in this article are realized by older persons. As uh, our distinguished older person said, the ministry has also expanded the older person's cash transfer program to ensure that uh, all older persons who are 70 years and above are able to be taken care of by the government. Because as government, we realize that uh, the, this, uh, uh, the older persons have worked hard and contributed to the development of this country. And we as a government have a responsibility to ensure that they live, uh, as they age, they are able to live a dignified life. And uh, that's why the government made the decision that all, the, all older persons who are 70 years and above should benefit from support from government. Um, most of the participants uh, in this workshop are people we've worked closely with, and uh, we always, as a ministry, want to share to share information because that helps us as uh, we serve our older population, and it enables us to to be of better service to them. So uh, we look forward to sharing with you as uh, you, as presentations are made and uh, also giving you our experience as government in terms of policy and, uh, and in terms of uh, implementation of laws on how we are giving support to older persons in Kenya. So with that, um, I look forward to our interaction today and, uh, and uh, wish, you, wish all of us the best as uh, we, for the next two days as uh, we have this workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thanks so much. <clears throat> you know, as I was looking at the, the panel, um, I think many of you might know globally now, there's a movement that says there will not be men-only panels. You know, in a lot of, lot of international events and so on, it's only, <laughs> it's only men who are sitting and talking. And it is wonderful that we have a woman, woman, all-woman panel, and that, that's great. And uh, I'm kind of joining there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, th thanks so much. Uh, I think once again, welcome everyone. Um, I think as all of you were uh, introducing, in this room we have government, we have the judiciary, we have the civil society. We, I have seen Mama Esther come in. I think she needs to introduce. Of course, Mama Joyce is there. And society changes when all these people, all these groups come together. And uh, I think I thank uh, you, Professor, for bringing all of us together. There, there are not that many days 
or that many events where issues of older persons get discussed. Um, you know, I think the issues of older persons is one of the um, one of the areas where there's, there's not there, 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 there's there's so many things that are not known. And I hope this works up in the two, day, the two days of deliberation and from your experience, we will be able to appreciate and understand some of the issues that older persons face from various dimensions, you know, as the concept note says, and as we will hear the presentations. And I think in the end, uh, you know, workshops like this will further the knowledge, further policy action, further society's attitude towards older persons, and I really look forward to it. Um, thanks so much. Thanks so much. So, um, Albert, where's Mr. Right? Here we go. One of the things which I've just noted is that as we talk about the wood, we have forgotten that there are also young people. And those are domestic workers who have been taking care of us in one way or the other way. We as a trade union representing the workers from a perspective of a domestic worker in our own houses. Sometimes we don't think that we shall go, grow old. We only think that we shall remain youthful. And there comes a time when Mama's spoken, I've remembered that the Bible which says, the youth energy hits the old. Mama is the old which is the, I don't remember. Yeah. Eh? The old? The old eats the youth. So here comes a time where we need to really look at our issues at old age. Because that is the only way we can be able to also return to our parents. Imagine my mother talking and imagine 90% of our times. And unfortunately, me, who is here, I just want to declare that uh, I can only employ and help her for my mother. Most of the times I will never there for her. That gives us domestic workers a challenge that we have a responsibility to take care of the retro and the old. So as a trade union, we shall be focusing and we shall continue focusing on now we can be able to see how workers, wherever they are, they are seen as workers and be seen as productive to the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, would you like to say a few words? Good morning. Uh, actually, I'm not going to say a few words. I'll just introduce myself. My name is uh, Jadida Warohio. I'm with the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. Uh, we, are, uh, we are sister commissions with the National Agenda. Actually, we are triplets. The National Agenda Inequality Commission and the Commission on Administration of Justice. It's just that I exercise my freedom of association to sit here and complete the table. Quite right. Quite right. <laughs> Okay, uh, Prof and the other colleagues in the room, uh, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. First, let me apologize for coming in late. And two, for those of you who know me, I might not have the energy I always have. <laughs> I've just had a 24-hour long journey from Odos, China. Go to my house at 8.20 this morning. So I feel a bit fatigued, uh, but since I had asked Prof uh, that we would do this jointly, I thought it was very important that uh, I just take a shower and come. So I hope uh, my apologies have been taken. Very uh, thank you, and I'm happy to see long-time friends around here. The judge, uh, welcome to these issues. Uh, I've seen my colleagues from Nairobi University, uh, Dr. Ari, it's been a while since we met. So I'm happy that uh, we have at least an agenda, a common agenda that brings us uh, together. <laughs> Professor Stewart, Professor Ambren Manji, representative of the British Institute in East Africa, uh, representative of the government that are here, we continuously work together, our sister commission, uh, distinguished academicians from Kenya and uh, outside, 
representative of non-state actors that are present, uh, distinguished senior citizens, and I can see my sister Magwaga here. She always knocks my head when I don't talk about older people. Invited participants who are here. It's a pleasure for us to be hosting this event jointly with a professor. I knew professor not long ago when a colleague did introduce her to me. And she shared with me um, her research question. And I thought it was timely and uh, quite uh, important for the commission that is charged with the mandate of promoting and the rights of all the members of society. As uh, my colleague, uh, Chief Executive Officer, did indicate that within the constitutional framework, the mandate of promoting the rights of all the members of society are with the National Gender and Equality Commission. And I would on set say that uh, we have barely started the work. We have not done very well in terms of uh, the agenda of all the members. I know I worked previously at the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, uh, where we documented uh, a report on growing older in Kenya. And uh, that gave us a platform of entry in terms of thinking about the older people. But this was before the new constitution. So what I would say that the work we did at the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights was able to contribute to the chapter in the constitution that promotes the right of older members of society. We then tried to work with domestic workers. So again, our colleagues uh, need to know this. But the challenge we ran into with working with domestic workers was that we only could meet them on Sundays. And some of them, their, work, uh, their bosses would not grant them the opportunity to come to the gathering. This project was led by Commissioner Wamboi, as she then was. She was so passionate about all the members of uh, society. And we even got uh, an, a lady who resigned her UN job to, sorry, her UN job to begin to work on issues of, uh, of domestic workers, and she even started a course where she used to train them. So just training them to prepare them to get to work into houses. Again, a project which she did for a while, and I uh, think she then got other things to do, and she stopped doing it. So when we then get uh, one of the goals of the sustainable development goals, focusing on care work, it's exciting because most of the time what we pay for care work is so little and sometimes we don't pay at all. Looking at our domestic workers, I know the law has set a minimum of salary we need to pay our domestic workers. Let me show, uh, see by show of hands, how many of us comply. How many pay our house helps 20,000 shillings per month? 20? 15? 20 years? 15? Uh, 10? Majority of us are at that level of 3,000. True or false? True, yeah? Yes. Majority pay 3,000. Yes. yes, and that's how bad it can be. And thinking of domestic workers, what we were trying to do was to tell them what their rights are, the rights in employment. And indeed, if, uh, and one time when I worked in the judiciary, I know domestic workers began to challenge their employers in courts of law in terms of poor wage. But again, until you meet a labor court that is so sensitive to the issue, that knows the rights are available, we will not get a remedy, sometimes from the ordinary courts. Because uh, as judges, and I'm um, judges here, and I worked as a magistrate, we also just belong to this society. I mean, everyone is paying their house help 
3,000 shillings. So when I pay five, I think I am much better. So it is so clear that there's a need that we need the domestic workers. There is need for older members to be taken care of. There is need also to see older members who are being left to take care of children when they lose their, their children, and we know HIV has been a key contributory factor to this. I'm happy Kelin is in the house. I'm a board member in Kelin, and I know we tried to do a program in Kisumu where we were trying to rescue uh, the widows, constructing houses for them, and we know that the burden mostly uh, is taken up by older members who are women in society. So I think when we look at the gender draws of what we are doing and care work, we think it is quite timely. And Prof, when you spoke to me and uh, you talked about your research, I found it quite unique. I found it uh, it's something that happens. We've seen it happen. And we've never have thought about it. But personally, when I began my career as a lawyer, one of the cases I did was in Moranga of a woman who had married another woman. But when uh, the woman who married her died, the family tried to disinherit her. And I remember it was a difficult case for me even to understand, to call it marriage. But surprisingly, that was the first case I ever did as a lawyer, and we won. I mean, the court was able to really reason through and see this woman uh, came to take care of uh, another woman who had no children. And she came in with her nine children. And the deceased admitted her with her nine children in Moranga. And they lived together for 15 years. So she was taking care of this woman for 15 years. And the woman admitted her together with her children. So for all intent and purposes, it was a marriage. And so it was so difficult, even for me, as I presented the case. And uh, I was in the farm of Mukunya and Mukunya and Mukunya. I remember Mugo Mukunya from, uh, from um, Moranga, who gave me a lot of history to read about it, to understand that this is a marriage. So I went to court to convince the, the, the magistrate that indeed this was a marriage. Of course, I didn't believe in it myself, <laughs> but I, I had the documents to convince that this is indeed a marriage. And this lady was so joyous, and her brother was financing the court case because she couldn't even afford a lawyer. And at some point, I think Mukunya then decided, why don't we do pro bono? Let's just do the matter for her because she doesn't have. And the court ordered that the property that had been left by the lady deceased belonged to this woman and her children. And the reasoning was that uh, she had been adopted together with her children. And we are talking about, uh, this was in 1992 when I did this matter. So I think the issues of woman to woman marriage are, are in our society, have been here with us, but it's just sometimes that we don't sometimes pay attention to what is happening. Uh, in other cases, a woman brings in a, a domestic worker. I've seen this in my village. And then the woman died, and the old man took over the domestic worker as a wife. And so sad enough that when the man died, the children came and chased this uh, lady away. So it, it presents very many uh, scenarios that uh, sometimes when we think about the work that Professor has done and is going to be presenting to us, we think we need to think in terms of the policies and the laws that we need to have in place. And even the minister, we want to thank you for what you're doing. But there's also a bit of the constitution that we need to come out and tell people that the constitution expects children to take care of their parents. So as much as we register those that are above 70, I was challenging somebody, I don't think I would want my father to be part of that project when I'm able to take care of him. So I, I think we must also draw the line. We, we have those resources, and I think they are resources that can be used by the most needy people. We have people who are needy. Really, even if I stopped working, 
I can take care of my parents. And so that there's that section of the constitution that we want to encourage ourselves as actors to go out and tell Kenyans, yes, the government is going to put aside some little resources to help those that are needy, but there's a section of the constitution that says children must take care of their older members. And as sometimes the parents die very quickly if we don't take care of them. That those who die out of ailing, I'll give you my own example. My mom died at age 44 uh, because of hypertension. Of course, that was good enough. But my grandmother relied on my mother. And at the funeral, she was like, who is going to take care of me? Because the other three siblings were not able. And anyway, two years down the line, the old woman also just gave in because she kept thinking about her daughter who took care of her and who was no more. My father now is at 84. Uh, he was a driver, bus driver the rest of his life. He still drives. And I was telling Mama, I'm happy that she, she's able to read without the glasses. Yet for me now, I have to take these to put on to read. And when you take it, my dad at 84 drives himself. He goes to the market to find. But good thing he didn't remarry when my mom died. So he has had domestic workers, as you rightly said. But what we do, instead of having to pay the domestic workers, you put him on a salary. So he also feels he is earning to now pay his the worker. It gives him some satisfaction. Because we try to say, can we get the worker? We shall pay. He said, no. I want to pay the worker myself because it gives him a bit of feeling I am the boss. I own my home. So we agreed on a salary. And we are all of us, we are eight, and at least all of us have one thing we are doing. We come together and he has his, his salary at the end of the month and he takes care of his home. And if you go to the home, he will give you a cup of tea. He is comfortable. If we make our parents comfortable, if we are able, they will live longer. So I think um, we all are interested to hear this, and uh, my sister there smiling because she's putting a face on the older people in Nyeri. Uh, good work you are doing. But how many of us can take that back step? Just go to the community. I think for the counties, the county I found closer to having a place where they put some older women, but in some old-looking houses was um, Transoya. Transoya at least now has put up a place for, for children, for rescue. And then besides that home, we also saw they have a land where they have some older members of society. And we're encouraging them that they need to put them in better houses. The houses are there, but they don't look so good, so they look quite neglected. But at least it is a step in the right uh, direction. So I think we will share as we go along. I'm happy that uh, this team is together, uh, hoping that we can come up with some policy uh, guidelines that can help the ministry and ourselves and the, uh, the Human Rights Commission as we think about all the members of society, how do we make our policy is better? How do we have the bill that is pending uh, enriched so that uh, we have the people who need to benefit from it uh, benefiting? So I want to welcome you to this meeting. It's not my meeting. Sorry that I've had to take uh, longer than expected. But I just want to say that as a commission, we are happy to co-host this with you. And uh, we'll take the recommendations that will come from the report to see how we are able to push them to policymakers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Latuma. I think um, Commissioner Latuma has set out admirably many of the issues that will, I think, be of interest to us over this um, couple of days. Um, she's highlighted, I think, a lot of the issues that um, inspired me to think about uh, the, the, the subject matter of this two-day workshop. So. I'm very grateful for her presence. As she says, she's just got off the plane. The last time she agreed to meet me, she'd just got off a plane and came into the office specially to meet me. So I feel very privileged that she has taken her time. And I thank the Na National Gender Equality Commission and the, the uh, National um, Human Rights uh, Commission as well, and the British Institute here, and Age International, and the Ministry for coming together and allowing us to do this together. Um, 
I'm not going to. Ta- We're all da- gasping for a cup of tea and coffee, so um, I'm not going to spend too long. I just wanted to say just a little bit about the context and purpose of the workshop. Um, as we've already said, uh, I think, and it's becoming clear, um, caring for people is a really important issue in every society. Um, And caring for people means caring as uh, an older person for grandchildren, caring for the work of caring that you've done throughout your life, particularly women who have often a particular responsibility to care for children, for issues in the community, for keeping things going. Um, and doing the day-to-day work that is often not thought of as work. It's just thought of something that you do. Um, It's something you just do because it's what women have always done and it's something that they should continue to do. But that's caring, and we all do it. Men care, women care. We do it throughout our lives in different ways. But sometimes it becomes more obvious that there's a need for more than what we do on a normal basis. And sometimes when we get, uh, if we're disabled or we're elderly, then caring for us becomes a major issue. And it moves from just being the sort of day-to-day love, affection and caring that we give each other into something that is more than perhaps we can expect individuals to do as part of their normal lives. And this issue of how we understand care, the day-to-day care, and the issues and the impact it has on us throughout our lives. And then when we come towards the end of our lives, sometimes we need more. How is it organized? How do we look after people that need more care than perhaps we expect on a day-to-day basis from the normal arrangements. And this this issue of looking after all of us through our lives um, every day, but then when care becomes much more... much more is needed, is something that has been of increasing interest because... Uh, to policy makers because often if your day is spent doing an enormous amount of care you really can't engage in a pay work because there isn't any time left over from the amount of work that you've been doing or um, it, what the work that you do as a carer is not recognised and there's been major campaigns that have started to come to fruit as we've said in the international framework which says, let's make this care visible. Let's just look at the care that people do, the unpaid care, the poorly paid care that goes towards caring for others. And this has come to uh, uh, national and international recognition over the years. And much much of it has been through gender advocacy, because, as I say, women have done a lot of the day-to-day caring. And we now have, in the Sustainable Development Goals, as other distinguished speakers have said, um, a recognition that care matters, that care that we give is important. And we need to recognise it and understand and value it and even reward it. As um, the Commissioner says, sometimes the domestic work that is done is not rewarded very well. It's certainly not in my country. I think throughout the world, the work of caring is not rewarded for the value that it gives to us all. Uh, And Again, as Commissioner Tuma indicates, sometimes this care is given within marriage. Uh, we, within marriage, it's about caring for people, and we do it in different ways. Men care often, and I'm making broad generalisations here, but men care by providing land, uh, providing wages, going out and doing that job that's been their traditional role. They provide care, they do care, but they do it differently from the other person in the relationship who often does it in a different way. 
Um, and so marriage in itself involves a lot of care and families care, as, uh, uh, as Commissioner Latuma says. But I think we are facing an issue which is can we expect families to provide that level of care that is needed when some members get very elderly. And Kenya, along with my country and countries throughout the world, are ageing. Our whole world is ageing. This is a, to be celebrated. I'm really glad that we're ageing because it means I'm going to stay on this earth hopefully a bit longer along with the other members of you all in this group. We all know that as we get older and it's wonderful that health services are improving and we are living longer and our children are not dying and we're getting to the end of our lives at a later stage. But when we do that, we're often more vulnerable. We need Need more care. If we're 80 or 90, it's probably, probably certain that we're going to be frailer than when we're 65. Um, so, you know, you, we have to expect that the celebrating ageing, it brings its challenges. And how do we prepare for that at an early stage in our lives so that we're not vulnerable later in life? So long term, as one of our... Um, our contributors here uh, says um, is you know long term care is an issue. How do we learn to think about the future, and how do we expect families to be able to do that rather specialist care without resources? So the extra money that the that the government here is providing, I'm sure, is hugely welcome to those over 70 because it's going to help a bit in providing that extra that is needed as we age. But these are big issues. Um, and it's being recognised in the S Sustainable Development Goals at an international level. But sometimes that feels as if it's on, you know, over there, up there in the stratosphere. And what has that got to do with what goes on day to day? The washing of somebody, the cleaning of the clothes, the providing food and gently persuading someone who's had a stroke to eat the food. That's a long way from the social development goals. But how do we put the two together? Because that's what we've got to do, I think. So that's really one of the reasons why I've been interested in trying to contribute to this debate, is how do we make care invisible? How do we develop policies that engage families, engage governments, and connect what goes on on the everyday with what goes on at the level of the international. And because I come from a legal background, although it seems a long time ago that I was a proper lawyer, but you know, I seem to have become less of a proper lawyer because I'm an academic, how do we think about the way the law works here? Can we use rights? Elderly, uh, older people's rights are coming to the fore. We're arguing the government here is, is producing a bill. We, in our, uh, my country, we tried to protect the rights of the elderly, not terribly well, um, but, you know. So can we give voices, uh, as uh, our, uh, our, our chiefs here, uh, you know, they're elder members of the community. When I was doing the, the work uh, in, around in Kenya, you know, the rights and voices of the elderly sometimes in countries is lost. And Help Aged and other advocacy groups in this room are trying to bring that to the fore. But how do we do that? Sometimes it's quite difficult to think about how we put them into practice. And how do we get the rights of those that care for people, whether they are wives or sons or domestic workers, how do we protect and recognise the value of the work that that is done? So I'm interested in the way in which constitutions and laws and dispute play, uh, forums like the community dispute resolution systems we have in Kenya, how do we work at that level as well? So rights are important. Um, and then uh, you might say, well, what's that got to do with this topic of the research that was a specific topic of the research that I did, which is on this, uh, this arrangement, which um, uh, Commissioner Latuma introduced much better than I can, that which is called often uh, woman-to-woman -woman marriages. And it might seem a long way from the issues that we have just been talking about so far in this room. But actually, for me, it isn't. 
It's an example of the way in which um, caring is given by one woman to another woman uh, in uh, a, a, an arrangement. And we would, I, will, I will hope I'll convince you that it has a relevance by the end of day two. But the reason why I started to look at this session, I'm not going to take up much time now because we'll do it more tomorrow, but it was a way of, uh, of looking at the everyday way in which uh, a relationship between two women worked to provide care in producing children for one woman who was, uh, through one reason or another, had not had children, and in Kenya, boys in particular, um, another woman, therefore, helping her in that arrangement. In exchange, the woman who helps uh, provide those children is, is given the status of a wife. She's and if I may use this term, rewarded by being given the status of a wife rather than the status as a domestic worker or uh, another arrangement. And does that matter? Is that, does that make her position more secure as she ages? And does she, because she's always much younger than the other woman who has not been able to have the children, does she then look after the older woman when she is getting elderly. So my research was looking at that as a case study of these much wider issues that we are discussing in the first day of the workshop. But as I have to show you, they are connected. And I am not, and I should make this clear, that the, the, the institution, the arrangement I was looking at and I had the privilege of interviewing the chiefs that are in the room here today about this issue and how it's understood within the communities that uh, uh, particularly uh, adopt the arrangement. This is about uh, an arrangement that isn't the arrangement that is in your constitution which says that marriage must be between a man and a woman. This is as it's described uh, as a marriage, and it's between two women. But it's for, as it were, a different purpose. Um, and it is not the same arrangement. Now, I have my own views on your own understanding in the Constitution about that arrangement, but that really isn't the issue that my research has been about. Mine has been about an arrangement within the communities which is called colloquially woman-to-woman -woman marriage, but within the community as understood very differently from the arrangement that uh, the Constitution uh, sets up as, as not appropriate. So um, my case study is rather an attempt to look at the sort of the local to reflect on the, the global. Right. Methodology, and then I'll shut up. Um, what I mean by that is um, what I want to do is to make it as, as participatory as possible. We've got such talent and expertise in this room, and we really, I hope, want to share it. Um, and so, therefore, um, the way we're trying to do it is to, um, as, the, as the minister, uh, the representative from the ministry says, and as, as, um, as Commissioner Lechuma says, we don't want to just talk about things. We do want to think about ways of making things better. Um, and if we, as, as, um, as uh, Korea Paul said earlier to me before we started, you academics always want about a thousand things. But if you, want, if you can get two things that are practical examples or things for recommendations for the future, that's a good idea. So if we could come up at the end of two days with two ideas that would help uh, make care visible and protect the rights and make the lives of elderly uh, citizens in Kenya better and help the world, that are going to be grand, uh, shape better policies as we do the SDGs, we would be doing something great. So the idea is to be as participatory as possible. So we're going to have presentations and then we're going to have representatives in the sessions that follow, which give us some clues as to how we might want to discuss things, and then we're going to, 
talk amongst ourselves around particular issues. So I do hope we can, and, uh, we can be as participatory as possible as we go on. Um, Jenny wants to say something at the back. I've finished. Okay. I've shut up now. I just wanted to make a couple of very practical announcements before we all get some tea and coffee. Um, I'm, I'm Jennifer. Um, I've been in touch with many of you over email. I'm Anne's research assistant based at Warwick. Um, if you want to get into the Wi-Fi, there's a poster up there with the, with the passcode. And um, if you would like to um, use the restrooms, they're on either side of the landing. And if you need, um, if you're interested in tweeting about this event, um, there is a Twitter feed happening via B BIEA, um, which is BIEA underscore Nairobi. So if you'd like to connect on Twitter, that would be great. Um, Benjamina, who's just popped outside, she's the Twitter queen, so she knows all about it. Um, and it's new technology. It's, it's new technology. Younger, people perhaps don't do it that well. But That's yes, fine, yes. know how to do it. It's a new one. Yes, and if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to ask me or um, Phoebe here, who's a BIA intern. Can I just, before we go for coffee, and I know you're desperate, but can I just ask the people that didn't get the chance to introduce themselves at the start, who I slightly as we were starting. If anybody didn't get the chance to introduce themselves, I know our two chiefs at the front here didn't get a chance, uh, and I think I noticed another few people that didn't. Would they just like to say who they are before we start, so we all know um, we're all the same? Thank you. Morning to you. I'm Enoch Mendeni from Makueni. Thank you. Thank you to, uh, to you. Good afternoon. Uh, I thank this opportunity. Uh, morning. Okay, I thank uh, thank this opportunity to thank uh, my heavenly Father uh, who, uh, to be here uh, because of his paper. And my name is Ar Joseph Koyech. Uh, comes from Bomet. Thank you. Morning. I am Edwin Birej, Chief. Uh, Kaboy from Nandi Count. Anybody else? Oh, yes. Good morning. It's not afternoon yet. Um, my name is Pauline Makwaka. I work with an organization called Senior Women Citizens for Change. As far as you can see, I'm also a senior person. Yes. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Yes. yes. Morning, everyone. Um, my name is Pacifica Okemwa. I work for Kenyatta University. I'm glad to be here and listen to the wonderful research that uh, is going on. Thank you. Good morning, all. My name is Hachukwe Michael George Nona. I'm a law professor from the University of Nigeria. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Esther Omer. I come from All Saints Cathedral Senior Citizens. This is everybody. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your patience for getting the cup of tea. So let's go and get some refreshments. And may I ask us, I'm going to be very bossy. Uh, my, um, my sons tell me I'm very bossy. Uh, and it comes from being, as they say, uh, a school teacher or a lecturer. So could I ask us to perhaps um, reconvene it at 10.45, have 20 minutes for coffee ra and tea rather than half an hour, and then we'll catch up a, a, an extra 15 minutes. Is that all right? Yes. Back here at quarter two. Yes, boss? Yes. Right, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to our speakers. Shall we say, shall we just do